Before we get to the video clip of Noam Chomsky on the bitter feud between Norman Finkelstein and Alan Dershowitz, let's get a breakdown of the causes. Norman Finkelstein, a political scientist, is a vocal critic of Israeli policies towards Palestinians. Alan Dershowitz, a lawyer, is a strong defender of Israel. In 2003, Dershowitz published The Case for Israel. Finkelstein fiercely criticized the book, accusing it of containing plagiarism, misinformation, and fabrications designed to whitewash Israel's actions. He even called it garbage. Finkelstein alleged Dershowitz plagiarized from another book, and that Dershowitz's main goal was to protect Israel's image, not present a fair picture. Dershowitz vehemently denied these claims. Now off to this wonderful video clip of Noam Chomsky, and following will be other points of the feud. Because ever since I, uh, I have known uh, Dr. Uh, Finkelstein, I've always wanted to know firsthand, because I'm, I'm like the, probably the biggest fan of this guy, and the way he actually placed himself in the, the whole arena of you know, what's going on there, but, uh, and the kind of problems he's gone through. I just wanted to know, would anyone go through the kind of problems Norman went through as a professor? Oh, he ultimately did become a professor, right? As an academic, talking about Israel, do you think any man would just go through that, or maybe he went a little too out of bounds at some level, or 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 you think he just got unlucky? Norman Finkelstein. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to know if if any any man in his shoes would have gotten through the kind of problems that he went through. Uh, what kind of problems? Well, you know, in his uh, professorship in his, uh, you know, the kind of the way people dealt with him, especially uh, wow. Dershowitz and the, and the whole clan. And uh, I mean, uh, he wrote a book uh, in which he showed that uh, Dershowitz's claims about Israel were completely false, mostly fabrications, other uh, of John Peterson, yeah. For atrocities. Mm -hmm. uh, Dershowitz understood that he couldn't possibly answer, so he uh, uh, turned to try to destroy the book. Uh, first, yeah. he threatened the publisher, it was a small publisher, threatened the publishers with all kind of lawsuits uh, uh, down to the level of writing to uh, assistants who were working there, saying he'd big law firms would attack them and so on. And finally, the publisher withdrew. It couldn't withstand all these attacks. Mm -hmm. So on um, my suggestion, uh, Finkelstein sent the book to a larger publisher, the University of California Press. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dershowitz tried very hard to get the University of California to Entered to even the go even approached the governor of California to yeah. try to get him to intercede to suppress the book. Well, they didn't back down. They said we don't care about your threats, and uh, uh, so they published the book. At which point, Dershowitz shifted to trying to destroy Finkelstein. Uh, mm -hmm. He was coming up. He was approved for tenure at his university, yeah. Dershowitz launched a huge campaign uh, to the trustees, uh, to the faculty, uh, to get them to deny him his tenure, and all kind of threats and inducements. All of this is in an effort just to prevent the book from appearing and exposing him what he had done. Well, he did succeed in blocking the tenure promotion. Yeah, so that, that's Finkel, yeah, but it, on the flip side, actually, that put actually Finkel, uh, uh, Norman on a very uh, well global, globally, a way bigger figure than he could have been if Dershowitz was not there. You know, it was like a a, a, a silver lining in all of that. Uh, I, I, you know, what I I actually was always figuring out the because as as you know the the Pakistani youths. Uh, and a lot of people, actually, I've actually spoken to in Toronto. I used to live in Toronto. And they actually used to just throw, it, throw, throw in the, the, the Jewish card that, you know, this is what the, the, the Dershowitz just lobbying and he's just pro-Israel and all of that. And I was thinking maybe it's not all of that. Maybe it's just pure narcissism on, on one man's part. Maybe sure. it, is, it has nothing to do with the, 
the Jewish lobby or 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 you know a vested interest or a or a behind the camera some sort of a bigger game. Maybe it's just a man to man thing. Maybe Dershowitz was just a a classic narcissist who. Uh, that's basically personal. Dershowitz uh -huh. doesn't want to be exposed as a fraud and a liar. He's very. Uh, he even writes books defending himself from somebody's criticism. He's, mm. uh, uh, I wouldn't say, I don't know if it's narcissism, he's trying to establish himself. He's a, he's a media personality, uh, you know, a Harvard professor of law, uh, presents himself as a very distinguished figure, doesn't want to be exposed. But of course, he's a extreme apologist for Israel, Israel just yeah. extraordinary. So it's a mixture, but uh, it's not Jewish backed, it's him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, but I, I, I never understood is that, you know, whenever there is a left wing Jewish uh, lawyer or any, any, any statesman, they're way more into the Israel game than the right wingers that you see. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a surprising that, you know, these people don't really claim to know the religious doctrine and have never read the Torah. They do not really know the first thing about the, 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 the reason why the Orthodox Jew would want Israel, but they're way more passionate about the game of Israel or the state of Israel. He himself has a, uh fairly intense Jewish background. I think he probably went to yeshiva, but uh, I don't know what, what what's the difference really. This is a single person who's a, a, a grotesque apologist for Israel, very concerned with his own uh, uh, position and image. He likes to present himself as a great civil libertarian who's fighting the battle of justice and freedom. And uh, he, as I say, he has a media image of that kind. He's invited to uh, national public radio to talk about civil rights issues. And he simply doesn't want to be exposed as a liar and a fraud and a vulgar apologist for crimes. That's all that's involved. He happens to be effective because he has uh, uh, resources, uh, uh, threats that uh, he can impose and so on. But I don't think he deserves this much attention, frankly. Norman Finkelstein went on to write Beyond Chutzpah, further critiquing Dershowitz's pro-Israel stance and alleging misuse of anti-Semitism accusations. The feud intensified when Dershowitz reportedly lobbied against tenure for Finkelstein at DePaul University. This added a personal dimension to the already heated ideological clash. Even decades later, the Toe have appeared on shows like Piers Morgan and Censored to rehash their disagreements about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Well, I hope you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. If you wish, you can join the channel as a member, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, I have a second channel, called Progressive Movement, the link is on the home page. Be sure to check it out. Now, take care and bye-bye.